So our next presenter, uh, actually, uh, he could not come. So instead of uh, his colleague will be presenting on his behalf. Uh, that's Ahmed Ali. He is a postdoctoral fellow at University of Sherbrooke. Uh, he just completed his PhD. Uh, he is working on concrete field FRP tubes under cyclic loads and uh, beam column connections. So I must mention that the topic, what is written uh, on the brochure is uh, not the same, it's a bit different. But if you are interested to learn more about the, uh, you know, the topic was supposed to be freestyle cycles, but he'll be presenting a different topic, but there will be another presentation related to freestyle cycle effect on columns in the next session. So. Hello everyone. My name is Ahmed Ali. I am from Sherbrooke University and I am today going to present about from my research project under the title of Beam Column Connection for Concrete Field FRB Tubes. The outlines of my presentation contain the following topics. I will start by uh, briefly introduction, followed by research motivation and objectives, then experimental program and experimental result, and finally uh, conclusions and recommendation for future work. Concrete field FRB tubes, concrete field FRB tubes, CFFT have several advantages, like the FRB tube serves as lightweight permanent form work, provides longitudinal and transverse reinforcement. The FRB tubes confine the concrete core which increase the strength, stiffness, ductility of the CFFT member. Also, CFFT member have high resistance to harsh environmental condition, like what we have here in North America, which make uh, CFFT members have longer life and require low maintenance. All this advantage gives CFFT members the ability to be the ideal candidate to replace the conventional enforced concrete members. So, CFFT members have been used in several structural applications, like bridges, girders, bridges, pile, poles and overhead sign structures. So extensive studies have investigated the axial and flexural behavior of CFFT member under axial load and flexural load. But up to date, there is no research have conducted to study how to connect CFFT beam to CFFT column. So this research will give an advantage for CFFT member to be widely, widely utilized in the practice. So the objective of this beam column, this presentation, to introduce a new beam column connection for rectangular CFFT members, and also to describe the assembly procedure of the presented connection. Four different material have been used in this experimental program. The first one is the FRB tubes. We have two different types of tubes, beam tube and column tube. The beam tube is rectangular grass fiber reinforced polymer bolt rooted tubes manufactured by the Creative Protrusion Company. And the second type of the tube is a column tube, rectangular grass fiber polymer uh, GFRB tube fabricated in our laboratory in Sherbrooke University. And this table represents the mechanical properties and the dimension of the tubes. The second material is the concrete ready mixed normal strength concrete with target compressive strength of 35 megapascal. We are used to fill the FRB tubes. And the second material is the reinforcing bar. Reinforcing bar of size 10M and 15M were used to reinforce the column footing, the column, uh, the, the CFFT column. While the fourth material is the epoxy grout, high strength epoxy grout were used. Okay, the idea of this connection is we have CFFT, CFFT beam connected to steel connection and the void between the CFFT and the steel connection is filled with the epoxy grout. After that, the steel connection anchored to the, the CFFT column by four anchors on each side. So the idea, we have here four specimens. The difference between the first three specimens is the, the embedment depth of the CFFT beam into the steel connection. As you can see, the steel connection is consisted of HSS section welded to steel plate and supported by two stiffeners. So the difference between the first three specimens, SE8, SE12, SE18, is the height of the HSS section, the embedment length of the CFFT depth into the steel connection. So this is the first connection, the second, one third. We have so connection number four, BSE, has the, it has the same height like the first specimen, SE8, 200 millimeter depth, but it has four Four anchors, transverse anchors. These anchors goes, go through the steel connection and through the CFFT beam. 
And this is the details of the first three specimen. As you can see, this is the HS section and steel plate, four anchors on each side and the stiffener to support the flange of the SS section. And this is the mechanical properties for the second, for the, the fourth specimen, the bolted specimen. As you can see, the anchors is go through the steel connection and through also the CFFT beam. This section elevation for the tube showing the preparation of the CFFT beam. This is FRB tube, and we fill this FRB tube by concrete. After that, we insert the CFFT into the steel connection, and after that, we fill the gap between the CFFT beam and the steel connection with epoxy grout. This is the preparation of the first three specimen. Then the preparation of the specimen number four, the bolted specimen, we have made holes in the same level on the CFFT tube and on the steel connection. And after that, we insert the anchors through the steel connection with the FRB tube. After that, we fill the gap between the connection and the tube with the epoxy grout. And after that, we fill the tube with the concrete. This is the preparation of the CFFT beam, the last one. And this is the real photos for the preparation of the CFFT beam. For the specimen number four, the bolted specimen, this is the real photo. We close the bottom end of the tube and we make the holes on the FRB tube. Then we pass the anchors through the steel connection and through the CFFT beam. And this is the photo after the installation of the anchors. The preparation of the CFFT column started by fabricating a wooden form as shown, then inserting the FRB tube into this form and making holes in the top surface and the bottom surface at the same alignment. Then we insert, this is the photo after making the holes, and then we inserted the steel cages inside the CFFT column, and after that we inserted the ro these rods and the BVC pipes, and we put the column in the vertical position for, to, to be ready for the casting. And the next, the next animation shows these steps. All the specimen tested under the shown test setup where the CFFT column was aligned horizontally and supported in two vertical steel rigid supports and supported laterally on this frame. This test setup is consisted of two rigid steel frames connected together by two rigid steel beams. 500 kilonewton actuator was attached to the main frame and used to apply the loads. And this is the real photo for the test setup. This figure shows the uh, instrumentation layout. We measure the vertical, the vertical displacement of the CFFT column using potentiometers and uh, the lateral displacement of the column using also potentiometer. We used two LVDTs to measure the slippage between the CFFT beam and the epoxy grout, and also two potentiometer to measure the slippage between the steel connection and the epoxy grout. The experimental results as, as it was expected, if we increase the embedment length, we will have more, more moment capacity. We will increase the moment capacity. And using the transverse, the transverse anchor increased the capacity by 35%. But as you can see, the, the failure of the smallest specimen with the smallest embedment dips, we have two millimeter embedment dips inside the steel connection. The specimen failed due to the slippage. As you can see, we have high value of slippage here in this connection. And for the second specimen with 300 millimeter embedment dips, the, specimen, the, the failure was balanced failure. The, the slippage occurred, then we have flexure failure here. And that means the embedment, dense, the, the embedment dips of this specimen is approximately equal to the optimal embedded dips. The minimum embedded dips required to achieve the full flexure capacity of this beam. While the specimen number three failed due to the flexure failure, pure flexure failure. And this video represents the failure of this specimen. <laughs> specimen number four failed in the embedded part into the steel connection due to the stress concentration around the holes and also making holes in the FRB tube reduce the cross-sectional area of the tube.
Okay, the first specimen with the smallest embedment depth, 200 millimeter, failed in moment capacity of 35.7 kilonewton meter with excessive slippage. As you can see, the specimen, the slippage start at this point, then the, the, the slippage increased until we have the big point at 305, 35.7 kilonewton meter. While the second specimen, where we increased the embedment depth by 50 percent from 200 millimeter to 300 millimeter, this increased the flexural, the, the flexural capacity by 78 percent. And while for the third specimen, we increased the embedment depth from 300 millimeter to 450 millimeter, that's mean by 50 percent, then the second specimen, then the second specimen, that's increased the flexure, the flexural capacity by 3% only. And that's mean the embedment depth of the second specimen is approximately equal to the optimal embedded depth. The embedded depth required to achieve the full flexure capacity of the CFFT beam. The bolted specimen filled at moment the capacity of uh, 48.1 kilonewton meter with very, very small slippage between the CFFT beam and the epoxy grout. And this mean the, we, using the transverse anchors increase the capacity by 35%. Also in this graph, as you can see, we have the, 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 all the responses of all specimen is parallel, and that's mean they have the same flexural stiffness due to we are used the same FRB tube and we use the same concrete. So we should have the same stiffness for these specimens. Conclusions. The flexure capacity was increased by increasing the embedded depths until the embedded depths attain the optimal embedded depths, and consequently, the full flexural capacity of CFFT beam is realized. The optimal embedded depths of the tested CFFT beam uh, into the epoxy grout was 305 millimeter, which is practically two times the depths of the CFFT beam. Slippage failure between the CFFT beam and the epoxy grout occurred when the embedded depths it was shorter than the optimal embedded depth, which has adversely affected the flexural capacity of the connection. Using the transverse anchors increased the flexural capacity of the connection by 35%. On the other hand, the presence of holes on the GFRB tube will decrease the flexural strength. Recommendation for future work, we are going to study this, to address this subject. We will study another types of beam column connection for CFFT members, also to investigate the effect of holes in the CFFT column and address the bolt button for the bolted specimen, assess the effect of the size of the void between the steel connection and the FRB tube B, is the CFFT beam, also testing the proposed connection under cyclic loads. Thank you.